Neil Khan McCain is at it again. He said that in the 2017 spending bill, if the government does not increase defense funding on the military, he will shut down the government, or he is considering to shut down the government. Neocons are obsessed with war. And you have to wonder now, why did John McCain completely freak out on Rand Paul when Rand Paul objected to allowing Montenegro to join NATO? Is it possible that Montenegro is near Russia and McCain is trying to form some type of perimeter around Russia by using the forces of NATO? The neocon's ultimate goal is to end Russia, is to go to war with Russia, perennial war, a new Cold War. And to get that, that their ultimate goal is to get Ukraine into the United Nations. But they can't do that without more support from Eastern European states. Montenegro is the first one. When Rand Paul objected to allowing Montenegro into NATO, John McCain said he is a Russian agent. He is working for the Russian government. Let's think about that here. Just because someone objects to your decision that we should keep on allowing country after country into NATO just so we can achieve this new globalization, this new world order, all those who oppose that ideology are right away labeled Russian agents. I think this really alludes to the fact of how John McCain sees the world. He sees it in absolutes, black and white. You're either with the United States or you are with the Russians. There are only two superpowers. China is irrelevant. It is the U.S.'s job, the U.S.'s duty to police the world because we have to police the world because we are the world. And Russia is the biggest enemy to that. Russia is the biggest enemy to that ideology that we are free nation, that we are the greatest, free, most free, freest president or country on the earth. I condemn everything John McCain does. I condemn everything John McCain says. He is a piece of shit. There's no one, no one bigger piece of shit than John McCain in the Republican Party. I have a buddy who tries to defend John McCain on more than one occasion. Yeah, but he was he was a POW. That takes some guts. You cannot use that type of argument in the past 40, 50 years ago to try to determine how John McCain's personality and attitude is now. Someone who wants to have a war, no matter the cost of military lives, no matter the cost of who lives or dies in any country, should not be looked upon with deference. They should be looked upon with not hatred, but contempt. Contempt. Someone like this does not give a shit about anybody, and he never will. When John McCain dies, I might have to throw a little party. I'm not sure who will attend to it because most of my friends probably don't even listen to politics as much as I do. But maybe I will do it for me and my subscribers. We can party on John McCain's death because it will be good. It will be good. A person who will shut down the military because we do not support increased military spending. And the thing is with that is that Congress, their idea was to maintain to the maintain the same amount of military spending as it is now. They're going to do a concurrent resolution or continuous resolution. John McCain doesn't want that. He needs more military spending. He needs it. And what really scares me about this is that a lot of people, or especially a lot of Trump supporters, they look at Mad Dog Mattis as a great guy. And Mad Dog Max does seem pretty badass. He does seem pretty cool. But now reports are showing that John McCain speaks with Mattis every single day. And that scares me. We know that John McCain likes McManus a lot. McManus, General McManus, uh, Trump's new national security advisor. We know that John McCain did not like... What's his name? Oh, I'm having a, having a momentary lapse of reason here. Jeez, I can't remember. Oh, uh, Michael Flynn. We know he didn't like Michael Flynn. Then all of a sudden, Michael Flynn's audio tapes that weren't supposed to be recorded, and they were recorded. His voice was not supposed to be unmasked. They were unmasked, and then it was leaked to the media. I have some doubts. I have some suspicions, I should say, on who leaked Michael Flynn's audio to the media. I would not put it past neocons in Congress. I would not put it past someone like John McCain, who has worked with the military a long time, who has been in the Senate for a long time, who, in my belief, is part of the deep state, who knows people inside the intelligence communities that could pull something like this off, like pull this off and get away with it. It seems like Michael Flynn, who wanted to work with Russia, 
who wanted to follow Trump and agree with him that we should maybe be out of NATO, all of a sudden he is gone. And who comes in? McManus. And McManus, am I saying it right? McManus or McManus? I can't remember. I did a video on him literally like two months ago. I got his name right. McManus, I think, with an N, not a T. Anyways, I'll just call him Special Mick. Special Mick talks with neocons a lot. Bill Crystal loves him. Jeb Bush loves him. John McCain loves him. Lindsey Graham. It scares me now that we have these people who neocons support this close to Trump. It also scares me that Trump was for getting out of NATO. Now he wants to stay in NATO and still spend what we're spending. Trump was against overthrowing foreign leaders. Now he is working with the Saudis to overthrow Yemen, to fight Yemen rebels who we, sh we should not be over there. I have to say, I am disappointed in Trump on his foreign policy so far. It doesn't matter what president gets in office, they all have the same foreign policy. It's in interventionalism. It's policing the world. And I thought Trump would be different. Sadly, I think his reform will be more on a domestic approach and not necessarily on a foreign policy approach, which scares me because we don't need war. We don't need more funding for wars. The neocons want this, and they are getting this. And I bet they're happy. If, if it's true that John McCain speaks with Mad Dog Mass every day, and that he's good friends with, with Special Mac, it makes me wonder. It makes me wonder what we are in store. We are already fighting in Yemen. We will continue to fight in Syria. We will probably overthrow Assad. If we overthrow Assad, then we can safely say that Trump is being manipulated by the neocons who are using his cabinet members to do so. When, if, I should say, if and when Steve Bannon ever be, gets removed from office, from Trump's close uh, circle, for whatever reason, then we know the neocons have won. Won in the sense that they have completely got Trump to get rid of everyone who aligned with his campaign approach, his campaign policies and platforms, that we should stay out of military interventionism, that we should get out of NATO. Steve Bannon still believes and still wants to do what Trump said in the campaign. If Steve Bannon ever gets removed from office, either from scandal or from Trump hating him, then we should fear. Because then we should fear that because then we know that neocons have control of Trump's ear when it comes to the military industrial complex and when it comes to foreign policy. And that leads to war, which is what John McCain wants desperately. And I'm done.